Hey guys, welcome back. And look, I've got hands. I'm not just a head in a jar. Now, today we are going to be looking at a MIDI plugin that's included with Ableton Live and it's called Scale. So if you come down to MIDI Effects, browse down to MIDI Effects and then come down to Scale, you can pull that onto your channel here. Only, obviously, it only works on MIDI channels. Um, so let's have a look at what Scale does. Uh, actually, before that, I'm just going to give you a little quick lesson. If, if you know absolutely nothing about music theory, and I don't know a great deal, I've forgotten everything I learned many, many years ago. Um, but basically, we're going to look at a scale. Um, the, the one we're going to start with is the basic C major scale. So that's going to be all the white notes. So a scale is, if you look at a C, a note C here, and then you've got one there, an octave down, and one here, an octave and up above, You've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There are 12 possible notes that you can use in a scale. And all a scale is, is a series of intervals between those notes. So quickly looking at a C major, you go from C to D. So that's two semitones. 1, 2. And then you go to E. 2. Then you go to F. 1 semitone. Then you go to G. 2 semitones. A. B. And then up to C again. So you've got an interval of two, two, one, two, 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 one to the next octave up. And that's really all it is. Each scale that you hear, and there's lots of different scales, lots of different names, fancy names. It's just a series of intervals. And we'll probably have a look at that in a little bit. So back to the plugin itself. Um, you've actually got a grid here with two axes. And on the bottom, let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. This is like the, your time axis. This is which note in the scale you're playing. So you've got 12 possible notes to play. And these are your 12 options. And of those 12 options, you can choose which note it is. Um, let me just switch all these blue blobs off. You can just click on them to switch them on and off. So what you can see is if you flip this round on its side, I'll try and do that in editing. I'm not sure if I'm that clever though. You can actually see the notes of the scale represented here. So this one at the bottom, that will be a C. That's a C sharp or D flat. Then you've got a D. E flat or D sharp is this one. And then you've got E and so on and so forth. So the, your actual notes, this is like having a MIDI keyboard on its side here. And these are the notes in the scale. So if we take the scale plugin back to default, it's actually giving you all the chromatic or semitone notes available in a scale to play with. So if we switch it on, it gives you all the notes. So that's a C major scale. If I then switch all of these off, so it's a little bit long winded clicking on them, I haven't found a quicker way to do it. And if I replace all the possible notes we could play with C's, you don't have to go all the way because this will illustrate anything I play is going to be a C. So let's take this back to default again. So what I've done here is I have actually, now let's just go over the controls a little bit more first. Um, we don't need to worry about all of them. This bass dial is giving you the bass note of the scale. So the first note of the scale, in this case it's C. So you can see the C, C the C being represented at the bottom. If you change it up to G, um, it's actually this note here, which is a G being represented. Okay, so that's your first note of the scale. But let's bring it back to C. We're just going to try and keep this simple for now. You can transpose in the plugin as well. So watch what happens as I tr transpose this up and down semitones. The note I'm playing, even though I'm playing the same note over and over again, is being changed. So this will transpose the whole scale up or down. It's not going to just transpose one note if I, if I play a chord. It transposes the chord as well. Uh, fold we don't need to worry about. Fold is just the range at which the incoming notes are detected based on the note you're playing, you know, the interval, or how far away the note is from the original note you're supposed to be playing, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. And then you've got a detection range here, so you can set the range in semitones and which is the lowest note to be detected etc but we don't really need to worry about that and you probably won't for the most most of the uses that you're going to use uh what am i doing right let's switch this off back up to midi uh what i've done here is i've placed a midi clip into live and all it is it's a c major scale so i'm giving ableton some notes to play with so 
remember those intervals we had two two one so we're going starting on c that's a c note there we're going up two semitones to d and then up two semitones to e then up one semitone to f the reason this is one semitone is there's no black note in between to play with so we're going so this is just going up and down the scale Very simple, very boring, very boring. Now, if we scroll down to the browser here, find scale, open it up, you're given lots of different uh, scales to play with. So let's leave this running, leave scale on, and just pull a few in and see what they sound like. Come down to C minor harmonic. There's a few versions of the minor scale. Um, the one I learned when I was learning piano many years ago was C minor harmonic. So let's pull this one down and you'll see some of the, I'm pointing at the screen as you can see it, some of the notes that you'll see along this chromatic selection here are going to change. So watch, there, some of them are changed. And what that means is, if we go back to our scale, I'll just explain it quickly. C minor harmonic, you're taking the first note, leaving it as it is, and the second note, this one here. And then instead of going up to an E, this note is actually coming down to the E flat or D sharp. They're actually both the same note. D sharp is D going up one. E flat is E going down one. So they're both the same note. So the plugin, I wish you could actually see the plugin at the same time. The plugin is pulling, oh, come on, the MIDI note that we have here. Sorry, it was there before. It's actually pulling it down to the correct note for C minor. Okay, so coming back here, switching the plugin off, let's play our scale clip again. And then when we switch the scale plugin on, you can hear the difference. Off. switch it off a sec. So what we're doing, we're going C major and it's pulling it this note down and this note down. So instead of playing that, we're playing that. Instead of playing that, we're playing that. Again, don't worry about the theory. All I'm trying to represent here is that a scale is just a series of intervals between notes. It's how many notes you go up and down relative to the last note you played. That's all a scale is. Let's have a listen to a couple of the other ones. Uh, so what we got? C minor harmonic. Well, most of these I haven't heard of. some of these aren't very useful some of these most most of them in fact won't be useful for what you're doing unless you're transposing all the other parts in your track as well but the most common scales for dance music will be relatively simple major or minors most of them not all of them but most of them will so let's bring it back to c made c minor sorry harmonic this is a very common one um now let's switch the plugin off what i've also done here is I've created a little kind of pseudo arpeggiated line. I've just put some notes in, but I've made them deliberately wrong. So let's have a listen to these. So they're all over the place. They don't sound very good. And what I've also done is I've created a bass channel as well. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play this bass line at the same time as playing the pluck and you'll hear just how wrong it does sound. Oh, it sounds awful. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch the scale plugin on. And what that's going to do is any notes that are wrong in this MIDI clip, okay, any notes that it perceives as being wrong, it's going to pull back into the correct place. So let's have a listen to it in isolation first. Switch it on. Quite subtle. And then 
on, and let's do it with the bass line. Oh. Now on. All of a sudden that sounds all right. Let's bring some drums in. horrible horrible with it off so that's pretty much it that's that's what the plugin is doing you, you, it, what it allows you to do is it allows you to get roughly in the right place um, and then just use the plugin to help nudge you to where it should be rather than where you think it should be so you can actually you can probably a b this you can you can put in a melody if you're struggling making melodies put the melody in and then Flick the plugin on and off and see if it is actually making any changes. You don't necessarily need to learn the notes of every scale. I don't know them. I haven't got a clue. I know a few. I know my majors and minors. This is something I learned a long time ago. But all these um, Ionian modes, I don't know, and it doesn't matter. If you read a theory book, this is going to confuse you. It doesn't really matter. Learn your majors and your minors, and then you can use this plugin to maybe tweak your creativity a little bit. Flick it on and off with a different scale and see how it sounds. So that's it. I hope you found this video useful and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.